Since starting my YouTube channel over 8 months ago, I have created over a dozen dioramas based on some of my favorite fantasy and science fiction IPs. Two of my favorites land outside of this banner. One, a unique scenario I created, and the other, based off of my own homebrew D&D world. Starting today, I will expand on these ideas and create a unique world of my own, one without limitations and constraints. This is Horizons Forge, and today, let's answer the call. To truly embrace this exciting journey, I knew I had to venture into uncharted territory, so I decided to dive into 3D modeling, a skill I had never explored before. Starting with a sketch I discovered online, I embarked on building a small robot I proudly call the Aether Drone. If you happen to know the artist behind the original artwork, please let me know so I can give them the credit they deserve. Now, I'll admit that I might not be doing everything perfectly, but that didn't diminish the absolute blast I had along the way. I'm eagerly looking forward to honing my skills further and bringing any creation I can imagine to life. Keep in mind this isn't the final version of the Aether Drone. Due to some printing errors, I had to make last minute adjustments. Nevertheless, I accomplished an impressive first model. To expand my horizons, I turned to Hero Forge for designing a humanoid character since my skills in that area are still developing. It took a few attempts, experimenting with different scales and making slight modifications, but I have finally achieved a flawless print. The feeling of holding something in your hand that you designed on a computer is beyond awesome. It's like unlocking a new level of creativity. Speaking of creations, I couldn't resist revisiting one of my old D&D terrain boxes, where I stumbled upon the perfect addition to our scene, an incredible 3D printed steampunk building by Tired World Studio the same creator behind the airship you saw at the beginning of this video. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video, as we'll explore key elements of the setting and discuss my goals for the channel going forward. While I worked on assembling a simplistic base, I let my imagination run wild, contemplating the purpose and location of this piece within the world. With my usual process of using MDF as the base and foam on top, ideas swirled in my head and I'm very excited of the prospect of continuing to build out this world. The what, the when, the where, and the why. After priming the models for future painting, I strengthen the soft foam using a mixture of Mod Podge, plaster, and paint. A technique popularized by one of the finest creators in this unique space, Boilai Hobby Time. Eager to enhance my sculpting skills, I attempted to sculpt a better tree than I have before, drawing inspiration from recent videos by the amazing Gamey Builds. Eric's talent as a creator and storyteller never fails to ignite my own creativity. While I continue to learn sculpting, I highly recommend checking out the work of real professionals in this field, notably North of the Border and Kalash Aesthetic here on YouTube. I'll provide links to all the creators I mentioned in the video description below. Using aluminum armature wire, I shaped the base of the tree and added bulk with strips of aluminum foil. Leaving the branch ends free, I avoided excessive bulkiness to explore an alternate method. Using a pasta machine, I flatten the kinda gross looking flesh colored polymer clay into flat sheets by folding them over each other and slowly thinning them out. I was left with a collection of nice flat sheets of clay that I could cut into strips. Slowly and meticulously wrapping these strips around the armature, I created a twisted, one-of-a-kind bark pattern.
Then using a ball stylus, I tried to blend those strips together to make the tree and the bark seem more cohesive. Finally, I took a sharp sculpting tool and began gouging little scratches into all of the bark to give it a more realistic texture. For the thinner branches, I applied a modeling paste using a hard bristled brush, adding texture without compromising their slim appearance. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you that I've included links to the tools I use regularly, as well as my merch store and Patreon page. I appreciate your support, so please check them out and hit the subscribe button to help this channel grow. On Patreon, I'll be sharing specialized content such as video updates, alternate cuts, lore and story for the world of Aethercall, and much more. Join me in making this channel something truly extraordinary. Moving on, I painted and placed the major set pieces, followed by adding basic foliage. First I painted the workshop with a beautiful copper brass color, and for the walls I used a stunning jade color by Pro Acryl. I envisioned this world as vibrant and one full of color. After applying a black wash to the whole piece, I stippled a bright jade over all of the darker jade colors, adding a bit of texture that almost looks like marble. Next I attempted a sort of object source lighting to create an ominous magenta glow from the windows. Uh, this didn't turn out exactly how I wanted, but I still think the effect uh, gives it that bright energy that I was looking for. Next I applied a brown base coat to the tree, which I apologize might not have been much better than the original fleshy pink color, however after some dry brushing it improved significantly. After gluing the building and tree to the base, it was time to breathe life into the scene. Using a brown wash, I emphasized the tree bark's details and proceeded to create some foliage. Using green clump foliage from Woodland Scenics and PVA glue, I crafted sturdy leaves to adorn the branches. After drying, tacky glue and a bit of hot glue brought the tree to life, and I concealed any glue spots with fine turf on top. A Vallejo texture paste gave me a rough idea of the path's placement while also smoothing out the seams between the tree and the building. Following my usual process, I applied PVA glue and blended green turf from Woodland Scenics, finishing with a mixture of isopropyl alcohol followed by watered down Mod Podge. To add vibrancy and depth to the scene, I used a makeup sponge and lime green paint from Pro Acryl to highlight the darker green foliage on the ground and on the tops of the tree. Finally, to introduce variation and depth, I employed a static grass applicator to scatter bright grasses on top. Now, let's dive deep into the realm of Noveni, the continent where the world of Aethercall unfolds. It's a land where unique technology, mechanical wonders, and breathtaking vehicles thrive, all powered by Aether, a prevalent form of magic in this realm. Though Noveni may resemble a steampunk world in some aspects, it is, in fact, a high fantasy realm. Dragons, abhorrent creatures, wizards, warriors, and magical entities coexist in this vibrant tapestry of adventure. All technology in this world is rooted deeply in magic. 
Some individuals excel at crafting these marvelous inventions, while others possess the ability to infuse them with magical energy. The most extraordinary and rare individuals are known as tech weavers, who possess both skills. They are the true masters of this realm. It's important to note that ether engines have significantly improved life in Nuveni. They provide warmth to homes, enable travel via airships to distant lands, and even heal the sick and wounded. However, in the wrong hands, these engines can become weapons of war. They grant average Noveni the power to unleash devastating etheric pulse blasts, while massive war walkers equipped with even deadlier armaments sow chaos. But that's a topic we'll explore in the future. Not all of Nuveni is one steeped in technology. There are many peoples of many different beliefs and abilities scattered throughout this varied world. Adventure beckons to many of its inhabitants, and yields great rewards for those who seek to travel its unique lands. These lands vary from crystalline caverns to islands that float among the clouds, to seemingly uninhabitable jungles and deserts, to simple farmlands. Though our introduction to this world is much smaller than that. Our diorama here today centers around Seros Griffinhart, one such tech weaver. Much of his adult life has spent secluded in his tiny workshop, immersed in inventing and exploring the mysteries of magic alongside his faithful ether drone. However, today is different. Seros wakes up with a persistent feeling, a calling from the outside world. Adventure beckons, and something unknown begs to be discovered. Is it a magical artifact? A groundbreaking technological advancement? Pure sense of wanderlust? Or perhaps a path to enlightenment? He doesn't know yet, but he embarks on this journey to find out. And it's a feeling I too can relate. As I put the finishing touches on this diorama, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for joining me today. I hope you'll continue this journey with me, so please like, subscribe, and leave a comment sharing your thoughts on this piece and the world it inhabits. Don't forget to explore the links in the video description to be part of Horizons Forge and Aether Call. See you in the next one.